Do you remember when we were having a look at this table here, which helps us understand if you know what the derivative is doing, then you can know what the graph is doing. And you've been spending some time saying, oh, it's increasing, it's decreasing. Sometimes you're specifically looking for a particular place or domain where it's increasing, decreasing, or stationary. And I left this gap, right? I said, hey, sometimes, it's weird, but sometimes the derivative is neither positive nor negative nor zero. Sometimes there just is no derivative. And the example I gave you was, if the function doesn't exist, y equals 1 over x is a good example. Okay, we know it's got a vertical asymptote. If the function doesn't exist, well, its derivative won't exist either. Because it doesn't make sense to say, hey, what is the gradient of my non-existent graph, right? Graph doesn't exist, derivative doesn't exist either. But then I left this open question. I said, that's not the only circumstance under which this can happen. And to un help you understand why, I want you to follow through this example with me. You'll need some space to work out and do this with me, okay? Now y equals cube root of x <clears throat> is a very important function basically so I can illustrate this particular case of what's going on. If we wanted to understand what this thing is doing on the basis of calculus, well, our instinct is to differentiate it. The only problem is, in its current form, it's not written in a nice way to differentiate, right? In, in much the same way that this is not written in a nice way to differentiate. What, what would we do to rewrite this to make differentiation more straightforward? x to the, to the power of negative 1. And you're like, oh, I'm in index form now, and I just use my normal rules and off I go. Okay? We can do much the same with this. You've just got to think back to your index laws. How would I rewrite this, max? x to the power of 1 third. x to the power of 1 third. Very good. Okay. And hopefully you were like, yes, I know my index laws. Now, we can differentiate this, and I'd like you to do this with me. Okay? If this is my function, then dy on dx equals. Okay, let's have a think. Um, it's a very simple expression. I'm just going to bring that index out the front, which means 1 over 3. And then you, what's the second step? You subtract 1 from the index. Now, a third take away 1 is negative 2 thirds. Negative 2 thirds. Now, at this point, I could just say, uh, I'm done. I've differentiated. But to make more obvious what's going on here, I need this chair here, so I'm just going to have to be clumsy. I'm going to write it slightly differently. Like negative indices, we don't usually like negative indices. We would usually rewrite that as instead of multiplication, this is actually division. So this, this x term belongs on the denominator with this 3. So I'm going to write it as 1 over, there's already a 3 there. Yeah, you see that? And then you've got the x to the power of 2 thirds. Are you OK with that? Yeah. Does look a bit weird, um, but, but that's what it is. Okay? And the reason why I'm writing it in this way is so that you can see, just like with this guy, right? Um, if I try to put in a particular value of x, this thing blows up. What value of x makes this stop working? Zero. x equals 0, because now you've got 0 in the denominator again, right? Now it's tempting to think that if you put x equals 0 in here, it's like, oh, okay, I'm not allowed to do that. I'm not allowed to divide by 0. It's tempting to think, oh, it must be one of these things, right? But it's not, because have a look back at this original function. Go back. Try this out. When x equals 0, what does y equal? What is the cube root of 0? Zero? Zero. It's, it's 0, right? It's the number you multiply by itself three times it's to a, get this, exist. right? Well, 0 does exist, man. Like, it's kind of important, yeah? So, so hold on a second. Get this with me, right? There, there is no discontinuity. This function exists. Um, its domain is all values of x, so it's fine. Okay? But its derivative doesn't exist. So at this point, what I want you to do, I can do this quickly because I'm familiar with it, but you might want to grab out Desmos so you can bring your um, laptop back to life. What does this thing look like? Well, I'm going to show you what the function looks like. Um, you can access the cube root of x, by the way. Um, on that keyboard down the bottom, you just got to kind of go find it. This is what the function looks like. Are you getting something like that? You see it there? That guy. Why is a cube root x? It's in Ah, yes, it's in the miscellaneous functions um, because I think square root of is, is just there, but to, to get different roots, like this is a cube root here, right? You're going to have to go into that bottom right hand side. Uh, yes, you can do that too. Thank you, parent. <laughs> it's uh, just a minor flex there. I appreciate that. <laughs> I know my Desmos shortcuts, man. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. So, sh 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 I hope you're there. Now, there's a few things I want to point out about this, right? Number one, um, this is a function with some symmetry. Uh, I'm just pulling this out from last topic. Function symmetry whereby I could take this guy and I could rotate it 180 degrees about the origin and you'd get back the same function. What do we call that, by the way? What kind of symmetry is that? Transformation. Mm, think again. Think, I'm, I'm rotating around, right? This rotational symmetry, which in the context of functions, we would call this an odd function, okay? By the way, it's the cube root of x, and 3 is an odd number, not a coincidence. Okay, I'll leave that to one side. It's an odd function, um, but also please notice it's continuous. There's, you can put any value of x in here that you'd like. Um, unlike square roots, you can put negative numbers in here and everything is handy dandy, it's fine, okay? So it works, it's not a discontinuity, but at this spot right here, the derivative doesn't exist. And my question to you is, why not? Well, we just went and tried, right? And your derivative just explodes. Why shouldn't there be a derivative there? Look, graph looks pretty normal, right? Um, <laughs> what are you thinking, Zahi? Think out loud with me. Well, we've got like a stationary point, but along the vertical axis. So it's never really flat. And hmm. as far as I'm aware, we haven't found any way of describing that yet, hmm. at least in terms of x. Yeah, very good. So Zaki's sort of on the right track here, right? This feels like, in terms of, come back and look at your table, right? Come back and look at your table. If you were trying to compare this to something, it feels like it's closest to this, right? Except that it's not because this is horizontal. You know, this is like going up, this is going down, this is horizontal. We don't have anywhere on our page where you've got something that's up and down. Do you notice that? We don't have any vertical lines. So in fact, what you've got here, the tangent to this graph, you've actually already drawn the tangent. It's the y-axis. Right? Now, why does that cause problems for the derivative? Look at even the way we write the derivative. Right? dy on dx, it's kind of our algebraic shorthand for rise over run. Yeah? But this point, at this point here, right? There's, there's infinite rise and there's no run, right? Do you see that? It's like it's equal to zero. So that's why even though the function exists, um, the derivative doesn't. So coming back to our table, we can complete it now, okay? If you have, or you try and find the derivative and it doesn't exist, either you've got discontinuity or your graph is vertical. And our example for this is y equals the cube root of x. There are, of course, others that do this, but this is just the um, simplest example that I can draw. So okay. Have a look at your derivative based on what it's equal to. You can know what it's doing, but this is a weird case. This is where like your rules start to break down a little bit, so you have to be more careful, basically. So why can't we just say dy dx is vertical? Um, well, dy on dx isn't vertical. The original graph is vertical. So that's why I've put it over here in this column. I get it now. 